I go to these newsrooms from time to time all over the country, and one of the first things I ask is, how many of you have a copy of your city's budget on your desktop? Nobody. Um, there's, there's silence every time. I think I've maybe had one hand raised in all these years, and it makes me crazy because if you're covering a municipality, there is no way you should not have a budget of that municipality, probably two or three years' worth of budget of that municipality, sitting on your desktop 24 hours a day, seven days a week because it just produces so much granular understanding of what's going on in your municipality, whether money is moving into police away from fire, whether Parks and Rec is having its budget slashed. There are endless stories coming out of that. Plus, you just need it, I think, so that you can kind of level the playing field between you and the government. We can't be everywhere all the time, those of us in journalism. Um, open government can be there all the time. If you engage the public and allow the public to participate in democracy, broadly defined, then it doesn't really matter how small the unit of governance is, somebody's going to be there. And if they're accessing information about that public governmental body, I think it has a therapeutic effect because the body knows it's being watched. Um, and there's something really powerful about that uh, as a, I guess you'd call it a preventative um, to corruption, frankly. And, and I think sometimes we, we talk about open government in all of these sort of euphemistic terms about the people's business and the citizen's right to know and all that stuff. I try and get down a little bit more practical. It's about watching them. It's about keeping an eye on our budgets and our pocketbooks. Um, and it's about people who are elected to office doing the public's work. And without public participation, that doesn't happen. One of, the, one of the things that makes me sort of hit my head against the wall is when people go, oh, it's too time consuming, it takes too long. It can. It depends on the sort of documents that you're looking for, right? I always tell people there are at least 10 or 12 documents you can make a daily request for that will inform your daily reporting no matter what beat you're on, from sports to business to city and county government to cops and courts. There are documents you can pull down, should be pulling down, I think, on a fairly regular basis that tell you a lot about what's going on in your beat. Um, one of the best examples, I think, is I used to routinely, when I was covering cops and courts, I used to routinely make a public records request just pretty much every time my beat got dull, um, I would make a records request for search warrant affidavits. And I would look at where, when, and how search warrants had been executed in my city um, across a couple month period. And that uniform, it never failed to produce an interesting story. You know, it didn't win me any Pulitzers or anything, but it made nice daily stories uh, that sort of enlivened, you know, the cop's beat can become wholly reactive. All you're doing is this person hit this person over the head yesterday, and that gets a little dull. Uh, and so I used that search warrant thing to try and figure out sort of a, on a trend basis what people were doing in law enforcement. And I found it enabled me to ask much, much better questions of, of the police that I was reporting on. And anybody that's reported on police will tell you that if you can show a little respect for the job, if you can show that you've taken an interest in their investigative techniques, then they're much more forthcoming because they, they see the effort that you put forth.